Application Programming Interface, or API, is a protocol intended to be used as an interface by software components to communicate with each other. With First Class 12, for the first time, we'll be releasing our own API to the public so that software developers can design products that are powered by First Class. For example, third-party developers can create applications that will retrieve authenticated content from First Class and display it within their own applications. Similarly, Authenticated users can update and create content within First Class through third-party solutions. The API documentation will be released with the First Class Web Services component of First Class 12, and web developers will be able to immediately take advantage of this new functionality. A new developer tool has also been created to help developers understand the API documentation and provide source code and examples on how to retrieve and parse information returned from the API call to the First Class server. The tool provides developers with a look behind the scenes as to what is going on when calls are made to the API. This is how it works. There are four sections to the tool. The first section is where you make a selection for what it is that you want to do. The first thing you need to do is authenticate so we enter our user ID and password and choose whether or not we want to log in using clear text or an encrypted password. In this example I'll choose the encrypted password and log in. All requests to the first class web server for data retrieval from the storage to the first class server are done by issuing HTTP GET or POST requests. Upon logging in you will see in the second pane the request that is sent to the server. Responses are returned as JSON data encoded in UTF-8. The third pane displays the result which is returned by the server. It is up to the web developer to then parse this data and display it in their own web pages as they see fit. The final pane displays just an example of how that data may be displayed. To assist developers, some common requests and posts are provided as examples. Should you want to request and present a list of all containers on the user's desktop, you retrieve the entire desktop and parse the data accordingly. The request is displayed here, but as indicated, the desktop contains more than just containers, so the returned JSON here has to be filtered and displayed to just display the containers and other information like unread items and community owners. The same request for desktop containers can also be filtered to just show the people that you follow and whether or not they have any blog updates. Some other examples of HTTP GET requests are retrieving the pulse, unread mail, or your daily events. Going back to the pulse, we can see how the returned JSON data has been parsed, in this example, to be rendered in the browser. An example of an HTT post would be creating a new conference, changing a password, or updating your status. Here we see that updating the status sends a JSON object to the server. A non-error response signifies success. Checking the pulse once more shows that indeed the post was successful. The API developer tool is simply an HTML page that uses CSS, JavaScript, and the jQuery framework to manage the requests and responses and display the data. Web developers will be able to investigate and trace through the code to see how the API documentation was used to create the tool and thus create their own unique solutions for interacting with first class within their own solutions.